Our next hymn is in the Black Songbook. You might want to pull that out and take a look at it. Now, just by the way, you might, you might have caught on that at the bottom of the hymns, both in the Red and the Black Songbook, it tells who wrote the text and also where the music comes from, and if there are any scriptural references. Also, the tune name is on the lower right, along with the meter, how many beats there are, and sometimes there's even a name for that. We should say, as we now move into Easter with the song that talks about the resurrection, that the suffering of Jesus just is not news at all unless there is a resurrection, because suffering is the way of all flesh. And so in this song, Come Let Us With Our Lord Arise, we have a song about the resurrection. You notice, too, since this is from Charles Wesley, this is not a new hymn. Not everything in this black hymnal is a new song. It just, for some, there are some that are very old. They just didn't, for some reason, make it into the 1989 red hymnal. The tune is a traditional English melody. Some might know this from uh, one of the old English Christmas carols. One of the unique things about it is, while it's in 6-4 time, there's a section near the end when the time signature changes to 9-4 time. In stanza one, the phrase, who died to save the world he made, echoes John 3.16 and talks about the scope of God's saving activity. It's the world. It's not just Methodists. It's not just Christians. It's the world. And we would say, in the light of growing evidence and growing awareness of the, the, the vastness of not just our galaxy, but the billions of galaxies that it, there's a high likelihood of life in these other places. And God would have concern for that too because all of that simply points to the vastness, the power, the transcendence of this God. Stanza two quotes Psalm 118 that says, this is the day that the Lord has made, which itself has had a number of him settings. It reminds us that the redeeming power of God in Christ is not just back there, it's not just in a book. It is always here and now, in our age, in every age. <laughs>
scripture reading comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians in the 15th chapter. And he writes, Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn receive, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. Lord, however and whenever you have come to us, give us the grace to recognize and to give thanks and allow our lives to be guided by you. Amen. And so Paul reminds us that the power of God's grace comes to us not on any fixed schedule, it's not anything that we can control. Sometimes we ourselves are the most surprised, but it comes and it has power to convict, convert, to transform, to heal. One of the ways that the power of the gospel has come has been through music and singing and certainly in our Methodist tradition. About a hundred years before the time of John and Charles Wesley, another Englishman, William Congreve, wrote this in a play. You'll recognize hearing it. Music has charms to soothe a savage breast, to soften rock, to bend the mighty oak. Our overall theme today is captured in the mystery, the majesty of the resurrection of Jesus. From what would otherwise have been a surprising, nasty, and shameful death. Without the resurrection, Jesus is just another idealistic prophet or dreamer. Brave to be sure, committed obviously, but really deluded and dead unless there is a resurrection. And so the Apostle Paul talks here and says, I handed on to you as of first importance. This is the main thing. Listen up. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. That he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And then he began appearing and here is one of those curious things about Paul. If he knew that, you know, after his death for hundreds of years until now, really, we would see him as the greatest of the evangelists, he wouldn't have to be so, basically, wouldn't have to have such a chip on his shoulder. He's got kind of this inferiority complex. He says, on the one hand, as he does in other places, well, 
Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me. Well, Paul wouldn't be the last. He felt that way when he looked at the others, Peter, the other apostles, those 500 that weren't named, Jesus' brother James. Paul felt a little left out because he didn't know Jesus in the flesh. He had that pretty amazing encounter with the risen Christ. We don't know much about the vision. We know it left him blind for a while, sight-wise. Mainly it came through words, through sound, through speaking. And in fact, we'll notice that as much as we are attached to sight, to what we can see, that that generally it is through sound, through voices, through words, that the most profound messages come to us. And so Paul, who for a time persecuted the church, was changed. He thought he knew exactly who God was and what God wanted him to do. But God changed him. So he says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. It's an amazing thing that God deals with enemies in this way. And that's what Paul said. It's amazing. God didn't come as an iron fist. God did not come as a lightning bolt, turning him into a smoking cinder. God came and called and transformed. And I guess we shouldn't be surprised because Jesus said it when he was here. It's in the Gospels. It's really one of those most core foundational parts of being a Christian. We so easily forget and gloss over it. But Jesus said, I want you to overcome evil with good. I want you to love your enemies. Anybody, Jesus said this, it's not me. Anybody can love those who love them. It doesn't take anything special to do that. But love your enemies. And we find the good news that God does the same with us. Amen.